What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. First and foremost, I want to say I had an awesome time the other day doing that live. It was cool kicking back with you guys. I forgot how fun it could be to beat off the comments and it's just, it was very fluid. We had a good time, let me put it that way. So look forward to more lives, definitely. I also want to say my car, I'm already reaching for the water, the car is running perfect. I guess the deal is sometimes when you change the battery, it forgets how to act. It doesn't act right, right away, so you have to give it some time. That's why when I pr first put the battery in, it was running kind of rough. Back when I came home, it literally dried in the driveway. <laughs> Dry. It died in the driveway when I came home. I was like, Ugh. I was like, I'm going to deal with that in the morning, man. I had a shitty night sleep, stressing on it. Got in the morning, room, fired right up. Been running great. So thank you, everybody, for our input when it comes to the car. And you guys, I know you guys, you're going to think poorly of me. You're going to think, Splinter, you ain't about shit, fool. But trip on this. I'm going to have to postpone my school one more time. I'm supposed to be starting this coming up Monday. Can't do it. Look, I'm not going to go in there and start unless I'm 100% ready. I checked into it. I'm just I'm signed up for the fall. As long as I get taken care of in the fall, I'm good. It's still fall. My school's only a month long. I'm going to get in there. It ain't going to be Monday, though. I'm going to put it off for a few more weeks. Because I messed up and cheated on the weed a little bit. I was counting on one of those drinks to take. And I've heard from other couple people that there's alderance. Those are called alderance or something like that. And they literally have, I did my own research, dipsticks. They can tell if you drink a drink. Because they can tell by the creatine and the gravity and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go there and just give a natural flow. I don't want to mess around, man. So, postpone a little bit. What else I got to say, man? It feels so good. I finally got a bunch of mail out. Mail was backed up. Here's why. About a month ago, I got some mail. I was thanking this dude for sending me a letter. And I kind of pulled the letter up like this. And for a brief second, I rewinded a couple times to double check. You couldn't see his address, but it was close. I even got him an IG. Shout out, homeboy John. It's you, brother. I got him, and I said, hey, brother, I showed your letter, dude. And, like, you can't see your address, but it's real close, man. If you want, I won't even run the video. He said, no, it's all good, brother. So what I do now is I get a letter, and I scratch out the address. But first, I write it down in a notepad. So Reese, Tabitha, Chris, Nick, who sent the candy, all you guys, I scratched out all your addresses, but I wrote it down, and I couldn't find the notepad I was written down in. So, what? You know what else happens a lot? I write notes for my videos. This is the notes for today's video. I write them out. I'll be writing. And I, sit, and I turn my back for a second and I come back. The pen will be gone. It happens all the time. All the time. You, you won't believe how often I'll be writing. Turn my back for a split second to go take a pee. Get my drink, whatever. The pen is gone. Man, it trips me out. I just cannot stand losing or looking for stuff. And homeboy sent me this probably a couple months ago. You know this has fallen off the art wall several times. Where's my guitar? I want to play the Twilight Zone thing. Twilight Zone theme. This keeps on falling off, man. I don't know why. Maybe I need to cut a little bit smaller. Let's get into today's video. I want to talk about some arrest. Talk about some arrest. Anyways, I'm getting you guys with mail out. That feels great. What else? I feel like I got something else to say, man. Okay. Talk about some of my arrest. There was an incident in Oildale. I was involved in fight. They even threw a brick through the window. It all happened so fast. And they say I know. They're like, the cops are coming. The cops are coming. I'd been there a week or two. I noticed it was a mobile home. It was my homeboy's pad. And he had a female roommate. I had noticed in her room when hanging out with her. Then her closet was a big pile of clothes. A mound of clothes. I went there and hid under the clothes. The sheriff did come in there and flash their flashlights. I even seen the lights. I was able to see their flashlight through the clothes. They didn't find me though. They left. So I wiggled my way out of the clothes. And I came out living. And they're all sitting around talking. I go, hey. I walked out of the living room, they saw me, they're like, oh, you got away? They're disappointed, like, that didn't get busted. I'm like, yeah, I was hiding under the clothes, like, damn, why the long face? Like I said, I started out living there, I, mean, I started out hanging out with my, my homeboy. He had a female roommate. After about a week of being there, kicking my homeboy, me and her start talking. Then one day, we're talking in the living room, she goes, hey, can you go get me some water? So I got her some water, and I brought it back to her. She took a couple sips, and she's like, Phew. She's like, what'd you put in that? She goes, man, I don't feel right. And I was like, what? I was like, dude, Aaron, I was like, hey, come in here and check your homegirl, bro. She tried to say that I put something to drink. I was like, look, girl, I don't get down like that. In fact, you're going to put a, you're putting a jacket on me right now. You're going to mess with my reputation. Oh, yeah, last time Splinter was here, he put something weird in my drink. I felt kind of weird. No, hell no. Take it back. Take it back right now. And make you feel fine or you feel funky for some other fucking reasons. I didn't put shit in your drink. So that kind of like, eh. I knew she was a cat then. I just quit talking to her. After the brick through the window, they ended up kicking me out, wanting me to leave. So I dipped out. But at least I hid underneath those clothes. There's more to the story, but I'll pick it up later another time. Because right now I want to get on to this story. Cops are looking for me. Cops are looking for me. I'm at this one pad. 
I say, hey, I'm going to go around the corner to my homeboy's house, to another house. As I'm walking, and it's like midnight, as I'm walking down the street, a cop comes this way, and he flashes me with his lights. Boop, boop, boop. But there's a, a, a median in the road, so he couldn't, like, come to me because he'd come the other way. But he hit me with this big, bright light. When he lit me up, I noticed there happened, happened to be a cop on the road talking to somebody else in front of my homeboy's house talking to him, probably asking where I'm at. I see that, I turn around, I break, I take a, start running. He chased after me, stop, stop. One of my shoes falls off. I jump the fence. When I jump the fence, I'm right inside this pad. He said when he chased me, when I jump the fence, he stops. That's what they're trying to do, is stop and listen. They hear, pop, 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 which way the patterns go. He said he couldn't hear it like a ghost. He didn't hear no more footsteps. He knew I'd dip, dip into that apartment. So I walk in, I'm like, they're like, hey, what happened to you? Where'd you go? I'm like, he ain't home. They're like, oh, what happened to your shoe? I mean, I look down at my foot, like it's the first time I've ever seen it, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? I was like, oh, I don't know. Next time I see flashlights, I'm like, shit. So I'm running their bathroom, and I get underneath their bathroom sink, the cabinet. I'm all the way crinkled in except my foot. I can't get my left foot all the way in, and it's the shoeless foot. No matter how I fold or pull in, just my foot's hanging out, and it's keeping the door kind of open a little bit. You can see my toes hanging out the bottom. I'm like, damn, so I'm like this. Hopefully they won't notice my toes. So the cop walks in, I hear him say, hey, you get the hell out of there. You know, you stay there for a few more seconds, hopefully he's talking to somebody else. Maybe there's somebody else hiding, he sees them tucked in their own little cut. I'm not going to get out. No, no, you see you under the sink. Oh, okay. That's me. I know there's only one sink. Get out. Busted. See you later. Off to the pin you go. And as I went running by that chick, when I seen the flashlights, she had methadone. I go, hey, give me some of your methadone. She's like, what? Looked at me like, first time she ever saw me. Like, shit, shit, the spot, fool. Anyways. Yeah, man. Interesting stuff. Water. Cops are looking for me. They go to my mom's house. It's a detective. And he drops off a business card. Drops off a business card. My mom talking on the phone. She's like, hey, this cop's looking for you, but I know him from high school. He was a friend of mine. I could probably get him to drop the charges. I go, cool. Call the next day. She's like, no way. I don't know what you did. They want your ass. I called him. He's not working. No kind of deal. I, I didn't know my motherfucking ass. Anyways, be that as a man, cops looking for me tough. I got nowhere really to go. I go to my homegirl's house. She's a chick, but she's like a dude. I always thought of her like a dude. We'd run around to high school. She'd be like, our arm wrestle you for shotgun. When we're going to bounce off somewhere. She's like a dude. I go to her pad hoping I could just hang out for the night. She had a roommate who kind of sold speed, and this chick I'm talking about kind of sold heroin. So there's drugs there, and they partied. I was going to go there for the night. I figured in the morning they'd kick me out. You know, you're right, you're welcome. Been here all night. So that night, though, she starts calling me babe. It's like, hey, babe, there's $5 in change right here if you want to take my truck like a cigarette. So I'm like, okay, honey. It was like, it's weird. I, I just ran with it. Like, next thing you know, I lived there like two weeks, and we're calling each other babe and honey. We never kissed, never even slept in the same bed together, and she was sleeping all the time. She was sleeping like this, sitting up. She's like, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Always nodded out. But yeah, call me babe and honey. Like we were a couple or whatever. We never even kissed, like I said. I don't know, it's kind of weird. I ran with it. Cops looking for me. I got nowhere to go. Uh, you can call me babe all day long. Yes, dear. I can go get cigarettes. So one day we split to the other side of town to go drop off some heroin. We were inside the apartment. She's like, hey, go get my, my purse and my soda or something. So as I walk out there, we're in apartments. I see some cops knocking on the, the apartment next door. There was a 911 call. Someone called in that apartment. It was a bogus call. Cops, I see them, and I take off running. So they come chasing after me, but they stop. They can't go all the way in the apartment. I don't know why. And I go out to the back window, and I'm trying to open it. And the cops are all, come back out here, come back out here. And the dude whose apartment it is come up to me. He's like, hey, dude, come back out and talk to the cops. I want to talk to you. I go, hell no, dude. Open this window. I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. Go talk to the cops. What? You don't know me very well, homie. I'm a splinter. Anyways, get me the hell out of here. I'm trying to open the window. I can't get it open. Cops are like, come here, come here, come here. Then I start thinking. The window, if it did open up, and if I was able to get out, it would open up into a freeway. I would have had to literally, like, run across the freeway, and I probably would have done it, and it wouldn't, I probably would have got hit. So it's like a good thing I didn't get the window open. Finally, I just ran back out to the cops, like, okay, get myself up. They pull, just pull me out, you know, run me through all the bullshit. I tried getting my fake name. I tried getting my brother's last name, my stepdad's last name, which is Italian. They're like, you're not an Italian. That's just stupid. Who looks Italian anymore? My brother's Italian. It's his last name. He don't look Italian. I'm thinking, what? So I think, okay, I, uh, I give up. It's not my last name. But that was stupid saying I don't look Italian because that's my brother's last name. He doesn't look Italian, so in your face. They end up catching me. Off to the pen I go. That was my first term. And that chick, she wrote me for a long time, too. And then I stopped hearing from her. And one of my homeboys in the pen goes, hey, dude, you're old lady. And I go, old lady, I've got an old lady. He goes, well, some chick is saying you're old lady. She sells my old lady in county jail. And they, they gave her name. I don't give a name. I was like, oh, yeah, her. She's in jail because she got busted. Her electricity ran out. So they did a power extension to the laundromat in the apartments and they just traced her back and found them they had dope in there and busted she's in the pen telling where she's my old lady and trying to write me and i'm just like huh never heard of her 
That's cold, huh? Then I seen her years later and she's a lesbian. I'm like, was I, I your last boyfriend? Did I have anything to do with that transformation? Hope not. No, she never even did nothing, so what? Be that as it may. I was going to say something else, but sometimes you just got no one to stop. Okay? When my wife and I going through a divorce and separating, it ended up I got the car. So I was working at Frito Lay doing some construction. She was staying with her mom. She had a car and I was staying at Rexon. One day, I guess she decided she wanted the car and she came out to Rexon with some sheriffs. And even though I was working at Frito Lay doing construction, I was still tweaking. I said warrants. So when she showed up, I ran, got on the roof. And there's like a little cubby hole by the AC and I was all crunched in it. Crunched? Is, is that a word? I was all crinkled and crunched and cracked up in there. Tucked in the cut. Like two hours. I thought the whole two hours, the cops were there looking, looking. I didn't know they just came, pulled up, didn't even come in the house, got the car and left. I'm up behind for like two hours. Excuse me. Finally, I'm like, scrap. Because I'm, and I'm like, scrap. I'm like, scrap me. Scrap. Finally, he's like, what, what? I go, dude, the cops still here? He's like, no, they left two hours ago. They never even came in. I'm like, what the fuck? Thanks for telling me, dude. I've been up here for two hours hiding. Thinking the cops are here tearing the place apart and you tell me I didn't even come in, didn't even get out of the car. That's fucked up, man. What? Anyway, I decided I want the car back from her. I had a copy of the keys as well. I knew she, she had a job interview at this place on 34th Street, for those of you in Bakersfield. Which, by the way, there's a grip of Bakersfield in the live the other day. What? Shout out to the homeboys and homegirls. Shout out to everybody. All you guys are homegirls, homegirls. I'm not going to come in here and set trip. It's kind of cool. A lot of people from the hometown. Feel me? Okay, so, for those of you in Bakersfield, on 34th Street. And there's a hospital. And I knew that she was going to be in this building having a job interview. So I went in the hospital, like to the top floor, as high as I can go, and just stand there looking out the window for a long time. No one even said shit to me. A couple times I see people go by and I, with their wheelchair and they're, like, they're having a hard time, so I grab them. What room do you want to go to? I was pushing people around, thinking they'd grab some. A cart went by with food on it, I grabbed a sandwich. I was just programmed, hanging out, just doing the damn thing. No one questioned me. Sometimes you just got to act like you belong. Now, I definitely did. Act like I belong, like I belong there, looking out the window. Finally, I see her. Here she comes walking. She knew that I knew that she had that interview, so she wasn't dumb enough to take the car there. She parked it up at a gas station, walked down there. So I left the hospital, and I kind of waited for her to come walking out, and I was following her. So she started running, like, help, help. And these Caltrans workers in orange shirts and shit and shovels, like, filling up potholes. They come to me and start swinging their shovels. I'm, like, running. I'm, like, dodging. I'm, like, I just want the car. I just want the car. No pedo, no pedo. I just want the car. I just want the car. She's running from me. She's like, I'm going to go file for divorce. Gets in the car, I'm like, thank you for telling me your next destination. To the courthouse, fellas. Somehow I got to the courthouse. There the car is. I see it out front. I'm like, what? So as I'm trying to get it out, here she comes out. She starts screaming, ah! And as I'm getting in, her and her are wrestling, wrestling with it. Something happens to her hand. She does something, ow, ow, it's broken three places. Like, yeah, right. You did her. She slams it herself. She's like, bam, bam, slams the door. Ow, he hit my hand. Bailiff comes out, snatches me up, wrestles me. Off the jail I go. And they must have mad at me. They put me in a weird cell. A real long, skinny cell. Part of the jail I'd never even been to before. And there's like six bloods in there. And it was weird. They'd all done a crime together. Some kind of shooting. They're all stressed and talk about their case. Usually they don't put crimes together. Because if they do, they talk about their case. And they put me in there with all these bloods. I, th I, thought, I think they were hoping the bloods would kick my ass or something. But they were just chipping on their own stuff. They had a bunch of crimes. They're all looking like 20 years. All kinds of shootings. Be that as a man. So yeah, man. Went to jail. Busted. Chip on this. I'm going to change directions. I'll tell you a homeboy story. One of my homeboys is my homeboy since the fifth grade. Remember I had a summer party for my fifth grade. One thing that was real depressing and it was sad and it was real embarrassing because my mom argued with her boyfriend. Cried, argued and fight the whole night. And she thought just because she went in the garage like we couldn't hear her. Ah, you motherfuckers. Embarrassing. Homeboy brought me. is like a comb and a brush and it comes together like a knife. Remember those? Boom. Com, uh, comb brush combo. Looked like a knife. I loved it. Get to me. He's my friend. Some fifth grade is what I'm saying. Later on in life, we end up being buddies. We're going to together. Run around all day. I'm at prison during a violation. How it is when you go in, you're doing time, you never hear from people right away. And this phone better, I mean, better not fucking die. We're doing great. Do not die. You won't hear from people. You go do a year, several months, you won't hear from them. Out of sight, out of mind. Then you like two weeks, three weeks, a month of the house, they pop a letter in. Like, I better get a homeboy real quick. He's about to get out. So that's what happened. I start talking to homeboy, and they're like, oh, we're going to send you a package. And I'm like, tell my like, two weeks of the pad, dude, can't send a package. Anyway, I'm talking to him and stuff. Plan is I'm supposed to go there and get back with him. It's my dog. And I know his old lady's a real good friend of mine. It's my homegirl, too. In fact, I knew her before they all started, before they got together. We'd all hang out at her pad. So anyway, I'm supposed to go to their pad as soon as I get out. So when I get out, instead I go to Rex and I'm partying. I'm up for five days. I trade this car for like a big old bag of dope. Up for five days. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to homeboy's house. And I have a car. I get drop, dropped off. It's an oil deal. It's like midnight. I'm thinking he's there. I go knock on the door, 
Oh, I seen his car there too. That's why I even got dropped off. I didn't see his car there. I wouldn't even stop. I couldn't get a hold of him on the phone. I knocked on the door and said, come here, Splinter, you're out. Yeah, yeah, gives me a hug. I'm like, where's homeboy? He's like, he's in jail during like five days for like a violation. I was like, fuck. Like, damn, my ride just dropped me off. I was like, sorry, no trip. I, I'll bear some out. So I started to leave. He's like, no, don't leave. I was like, well, I'm not going to get back home. He's in jail. He's like, Splinter, quit me stupid. You're my friend, too, fools. How you been? He's like, want to smoke some weed? I'm like, yeah. So they just moved in that apartment. And they had nothing to live in that only bedroom furniture. They had no couch, no TV, none of that shit. They had TVs in the bedroom. They had no couches. and no living room furniture set up. We're in the bedroom, sitting on the bed, smoking a joint. I'm not thinking none of it. Like I said, it's my homeboy. He should know I'm not going to do him dirty. She should know I wouldn't do him dirty. She's a friend of mine, too. I'm not thinking none of it. So we're smoking weed, and then we start getting tired. And I was like, hey, let me have a blanket and a pillow. I'm going to go out in the living room and lay down. It's like, no, fuck that. She's like, you're going to sleep in bed with me, man. I'm not going to have you sleep in the hardwood floors and not even a couch. I was like, sleep in bed with you. She's like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, it says sleep in regular way. I'll sleep long way. My feet might hang off to be a bigger gap between us. She's like, splinter, dude, you're tripping. Could I like that? Just lay down, sleep regular way. Just got the panty, been up five days, crash out in the morning. Now, see you in the morning. I go, okay. So I crash out. Wake up in the middle of the night. She's rubbing her arse on me. She's all backed up into me. She knows she's rubbing arse on me. So I turn my back, put my back to her. Then she takes my blanket away from me. And she's like, you got my blanket. And she said some rude stuff. She's being mean to me and took the blanket away. And I was like, oh, whatever. I ignored her. In the morning, I get up. She's being kind of rude to me. She said, I'm going to go to the diet plaza. You want to go? And I was like, no, nah, I better just leave. So I left. Got her right out of there. I never plan on telling homeboy nothing. I'm not going to tell him, but he don't know. won't hurt him. I didn't do nothing with homegirl. I wouldn't do that. I think dudes who fucked their homeboys or ladies are pieces of shit. I would never do it. He would probably bone my old lady, though, but two wrongs don't make a right. I gave him way more respect than he would give me. Be it as a man, I don't say nothing. I guess she does. I guess she decides to tell him. So he calls me up. He's like, come over, homeboy. And I was like, hey, I'm out looking for dope. I got some money. I'm trying to score. He goes, I got dope. Just come up here. I got it. I was like, all right. Thing that. So I go over there, and they live upstairs. I get to go up the stairs to get that thing. So I go, and I knock, and he answers it, and he kind of comes up. So he goes, downstairs, fool. He goes downstairs, and he gets real close to me. He just puts his hand on my chest like this, real close eye to eye. Distance where I couldn't, really, you know, he had a position where I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't swing on him. We were too close. He's like, "Hey, fool, you over here when I was in jail?" I was like, "Yeah, but nothing happened." I was like, "You're tripping, dude." He goes, "We might have to fight." He goes, "Now me and my lady are fighting. You started a bunch of shit." I go, "Dude, I apologize." I go, "Nothing happened, brother. Shouldn't even be an issue. I stayed over here before when you weren't here. Just happened you were in jail, dude. Nothing happened, brother. I wouldn't do that to you." He goes, "Well, call me later. We might have to fucking fight, motherfucker." I was like, "Whatever. If you want to sling him right now, call me later." I leave. I guess he goes in there, and beats her ass, goes to jail. He gets out of jail and gets back with her. I don't see him for years and years. I mean, he's not my humble no more because all that incident. They ended up getting divorced. I seen him later. He said for years, every time she got tweaked out, she'd be looking out her window. She goes, oh, there's Splinter. Splinter's stalking us. He's watching our house. I see Splinter's car across the street. He's like, dude, did you ever used to come by our apartment? Because I had a, a white Corsica when I knew him. And that white Corsica, I go, no. Remember what I told you guys? I traded a car for dope. When I got out of prison that time, I traded that Corsica for a big old back of dope because it broke. He's like, dude, you used to come over or the, that that Corsica across the my house and watch that pad. Or pad. And I go, no, dude, I got rid of that Corsica. I didn't even have it. Come fuck with you guys, dog. So, yeah, man. What do you guys think? Think I should have told him? I just want to bring it up because I already don't want to hurt him and nothing bad happened. And I thought when she was fucking with it on me, it could have been by accident in her sleep. I was just trying to put it behind me. I didn't think there was a problem. I didn't think there was an issue. Anyways, I'm going to cut the string on this and let it fly. Peace.